We are going to look at GA4's new and returning users metrics in Looker Studio. And specifically what we're going to do is we're going to create a donut chart like this, which shows you the relationship between new and returning users. Along the way, we're going to do some cool stuff, some use some cool Looker Studio techniques. We're going to create a blend and we're actually going to use a coalesce function to do one version of this chart. Kind of handy skills if you like showing things in donut or pie charts. Um, there's some, the data has to be set up a specific way. I'm going to show you how to take data that wasn't set up that way and make it work. One thing I want to highlight before we dive in is the definition of new users. So I think it's a little bit ambiguous. Is a new user a new user in the time frame that I'm reporting on? So if I report on last month, is it does it mean the first time a user visits, they count as a new user during that month, or is it the first time ever? Well, if you look at the second sentence, what it really means is it's the first time ever because it's saying that a user has to have this first open or first visit event to count as a new user, and that only happens once in the lifetime of a user. So that's going to matter a lot because we're going to explore what returning users means, how Google calculates it, and I'm actually going to dive into a little bit of exploration of that and, and how we might calculate it differently. So let's hop into Looker Studio. The first thing we're going to do is have a look at these metrics. So we're going to look at users, new users, and returning users. And let's find something interesting. So first thing I'm going to do is drop a scorecard in here. And I'm going to change this to active users. The users metric in GA4 reporting is active users. So there is also a total users metric. An active user is defined as a user that is new to the site or a user that has at least one millisecond of engagement time. So very low bar for engagement, but that's what an active user is. A total user doesn't have to meet that criteria. So it's, it's any user ID that appears in the site. A lot of times they're very similar, but sometimes they're not. And usually that's because there's something that's generating events that's creating user IDs with no engagement time. So, and it could be, you know, it could be like bot traffic or something or something like that. But in any case, active users in Looker Studio is equivalent to users in GA4 reporting. So we've got active users here. Now let's see something interesting. I'm gonna drop a table here. I'm gonna make my dimension, there's a dimension in the GA4 connector, new versus returning. And we've got active users here. And I'm gonna add a summary row, row so we can see the total. So now you see that that grand total here is the same, 10,348. But what's odd is that new plus returning, if you look at these two numbers, it actually adds up to more than 12,000. So the grand total is 10,000, but that is not the sum of these rows. So why is that? Well, the reason for that is, is that with Google's metric for returning users, a user can be counted more than once. And in fact, is counted more than once. So the first time that user shows up, it's considered a new user. And then when it shows that that user shows up again, they're considered a returning user, which is, I think is kind of weird. Like we don't expect that the count of new users and returning users is greater than total users, but the way that Google counts it, it is. Like from my point of view, what I'm interested in is how many people visited once and how many people visited more than once. But Google is counting the people that visited more than once as also being people that visited once which I don't like. So I'm going to show you how to report on Google's metrics, which are going to match Google's reporting in their retention report. Then I'm also going to show you, and you can see here, 9, 9,815, 2,847, approximately. So that's similar to the, you know, these are rounded, but it's the same metrics here. So I'll show you how to report on Google's way of calculating it, but I'm gonna show you a different way of calculating which I prefer. So let's move on to 
First, we'll start with how Google calculates it and we'll put it in that nifty donut chart. I'm gonna keep these up here, but I'm gonna move them out of the way while we create our donut charts. Okay, now the first one, I'm gonna insert a, we'll start with a pie chart. And actually, interestingly, so it's using my GA4 connector and because it was the last thing I selected, it's picking new versus returning. We're going to change this to a donut chart. So our dimension is the new versus returning dimension and the metric is active users. We do have a not set, which is, I don't know if there's even a value in there. I'm going to add a filter here to get rid of not set. So I'm going to create a filter and I'm going to call this GA4 exclude new versus returning not set. There we go. New versus returning equals not set. I'm excluding that. I'm going to save that. And that's okay. So that got rid of that. All right. Now I'm just going to label this with that this is Google's calculation. Okay, did a little, re little reformatting, make it uh, a little easier to understand. Now let's have a look at my calculation, which doesn't result in double counting users. So what I want to do is create a metric, which as I say, is not going to double count users, which is actually ends up being really simple. So I'm going to take my scorecard here and I'm going to copy this over and then I'm going to switch that to be new users. And then from my point of view, so in this time frame, we have 10,348 active users. We have 9,847 new users. So really returning users, if we want to count them uniquely, are active users minus new users. So I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to create a metric over here. And I'm going to create a field. I'm going to call this returning users. And it's just going to be active users minus new users. Stands to reason, right? So in this time frame, we had this many active users, and of those, these were people that were new in this time frame. And so therefore, these are users that are returning in this time frame. And if you add these two up, they're gonna add up to active users because returning users is just active users minus new users. So now what putting this in a pie chart is a little bit tricky. So what we're going to do here is we need to start by creating a blend. So I'm going to go and add a blend. Got GA4 here. So I'm going to do something kind of weird. I'm going to actually create a field here and I'm going to call this user type. I'm going to say new, apply that. Then I'm going to add a metric, which is new users. And then I'm going to join another table. I'm going to do J4 again. I'm going to create a field here. I'm going to say user type. I'm going to say returning. And then what I'm going to do is for my metric here, I'm going to make a similar, similar to what I just did. I'm just going to take active users minus new users, apply that. Now the way that I'm going to join these is a full outer join, which is going to combine both data sets. So I'm, I've created a dimension user type and on the left user type is new and the metric is new users. And on the right, the user type is returning and the metric is returning users. So click that as a full outer join. And I'm going to call this GA4 new this is turning let's save that close now going to insert pie chart go ahead and switch that to a donut chart already then i'm going to switch my data source to the data source that i just created okay now i'm going to do something weird for my dimension right now we switch this to new versus returning We've got new users, returning users, user type, user type. So in a, in a 
full outer join, it's going to actually return all fields from both tables. So I'm going to do something kind of tricky here. So I'm going to click on this dimension. Now I'm going to create a field and I'm going to use the coalesce function. So I'm just going to call this user type. I'm going to use coalesce. What coalesce does is if you look here, so it says returns the first non-missing value found in the list of fields. So I'm going to give it user type from table one and then user type from table two. Apply that. Then for my metric, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to call this just, I'll call it just users. And then I'm going to do here, I'm going to say new users and returning users. And there we go. Let me do a little formatting. So you can see because Google's approach double counts users, now because we have deduplicated returning users, the percentage is actually a bit smaller and from my point of view, more accurate. Now, this, this whole coalesce thing, I think is kind of weird and hard to get your head around. So, so let's just have a look at what we're doing here. So for our blend, what we did is on the left, we used GA4 data and we created a user type dimension with a value of new. And I've just put an example number in here for new users of 25. And then we joined it to GA4 again and created user type dimension with a value of returning. So then when we join these together as a full outer join, what it's going to do is it's going to combine everything from both sides of the join. So what we ended up with is columns for user type from the left and user type from the right and new users from the left and returning users from the right. So And you see these holes in the data and this is where the coalesce comes in. So this is what the join data set or the data blend looked like. Then what we did is we use this coalesce function, which returns the first non-missing value. And so I've spelled it out here. So we have a coalesce and I'm just giving you as an example. So if we have a coalesce and it has two values, new and null, it's going to return new because it's going to return the first non-missing or non-null value. So when we coalesce where the second value is returning and the first value is null, it returns returning. What this produces in the table is two new columns, which I called user type and users, which coalesce those two values. So as you can see here on user type in the first row, the user type from the left, left table is non-null. So it gets the user type new. Then the coalesced value of user type gets returning in the second row. And similarly for users. Now, what's really important about this is that when we create a donut chart or pie chart, we need a dimension with a metric. So we can't take two different dimensions. We can't say, I want to take a dimension for new users and a dimension for returning users. I need a dimension, which is going to, the values of that dimension are going to re represent slices of the pie. So it's going to take the metric that I give it. So we need this user type dimension, which didn't it doesn't exist for my dimension. So there we use the new versus returning dimension that Google has using their calculation. And that worked for the first pie chart we created, but we didn't have something comparable for the one that I created. So we had to do this fanciness with this full outer join and this coalesce to create our custom dimension to use as the basis for the pie chart. So hopefully that clears it up. It's a kind of a, I don't know, it's a weird combination of concepts, this full outer join combining these two data sets and then using the coalesce to pull it together into unified values. Uh, maybe, you know, try it out and hopefully that'll help you help you get your head around it. So I hope that helped make sense of what we did with that full outer join and then the coalesce. It's a really useful tactic when you want to report on metrics and dimensions in a pie or donut chart. And there are other circumstances too, but just this idea that you can take data 
and you can kind of reorganize it the way that you want, I think is super powerful. So hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click the like button. Really appreciate it. And check out 2octobers.com for more videos. We also help people with GA4, Looker Studio. We do training. And I guess that's it. So thanks very much for watching.